management of fibroid in the last video on fibroid okay management of fibroid actually most of the cases of fibroid is uh, treated conservatively okay especially if we have no symptoms and small fibroid small fibroid is below than 12 centimeters okay so most most of these cases are treated conservatively by follow-up okay by recurrent pelvic examination and ultrasound to to see if there is an increasing size and growing of the fibroid or not okay now let's start with lines of treatment treatment rather than the conservative side okay we have the non-hormonal therapy these non-hormonal lines of treatment are just to treat symptoms so simple symptomatic treatment like non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs or what we call anti-fibrinolytics the aim behind these is to decrease symptoms like vaginal bleeding, dysmenorrhea or the pain that may be caused by fibroid sometimes okay? so this is the first time in hormonal treatment the second line is hormonal treatment like combined oral contraceptive pills and in the last video in the, pre the previous video i told you that the combined or uh, contraceptive pills may reduce or treat uh, uh, or prevent the uh, formation of a new fibroid or th the development of new but the old fibroid will not be treated by this okay so combined oral contraceptive pills like oral and vaginal combined oral Progesterone only uh, is also used, like medroxyprogesterone acetate, oral progesterone, and myrina. In small doses are used to treat symptoms of the fibroid. Not to shrink the fibroid cells, but to treat symptoms also. The third hormonal line of treatment is gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist like leprone and the mechanism of action of gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist is to block ovarian steroidogenesis as you know steroidogenesis is a problem in fibroids okay estrogen and progesterone estrogen and progesterone receptors they are all the problem so gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist will block ovarian steroidogenesis and that will decrease especially estrogen level Decrease in estrogen level will shrink fibroid to 60-70% and will decrease the bleeding. So it will treat the symptoms and shrink the fibroid itself. But the problem is gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist okay, will have, I call it, menopause effect. Because gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist it play the role of menopause. Okay? It has va it decreases estrogen and progesterone, so it has vasomotor symptoms and will decrease bone density, just like menopause. Because of that, we can only use it for six months. Okay, and the aim behind you. Uh, uh, by the way, after six months, the fibroid will recur the same it was before treatment with gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist so what is the goal behind treating with this the goal is to stop bleeding during this period okay to shrink fibroid and increase hematocrit why prior to surgery so we just use gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist before doing the surgery to shrink the size of uh, Sorry, to shrink the fibroid and to uh, uh, to make a, a better access to fibroid, and we may uh, use vaginal hysterectomy instead of abdominal hysterectomy as the if the fibroid has decreased uh, in good measure. Okay, and also we may we may combine uh, the gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist with other uh, hormonal drugs like progesterone or combined oral contraceptive pills 
just to decrease the side effects, okay, with a small dose. So this is the only drug that can shrink the fibroid and it's used ju just before the surgery to reduce the size and to apply better access to the fibroid. Combined oral contraceptive pills, progesterone only, are all used just to uh, treat symptoms of fibroid. We have selective progesterone receptor antagonists. If you remember in the previous and sorry in the previous video i told you that the progesterone play a role in formation of fibroid by killing apoptosis of cells okay so if we have a selective progesterone receptor antagonist like mifepristone like mifepristone then we will shrink also the uterus we will shrink uh, the fibroid i'm sorry we will shrink the fibroid so what is the underlying mechanism of this is not yet un uh, known, well known, okay? So it's just uh, experienced uh, evidence, okay? It is not uh, well known the mechanism of selective progesterone receptor antagonist mifepristone. Are you for 186? Now let's move to surgeries of fiber. These are the hormonal drugs, the non-hormonal, the medical aspect of treating uh, fibroids. And none of them is definite treatment. Okay, surgery is the only definite treatment of fibroids. If we want, and surgeries actually depend on what we want. If, do, we, do we need to preserve the uterus? Do we need to preserve the, fer the fertility? Okay. And, these requirements uh, specify our surgery to be done for fibroid. For example, we have uterine artery, arteries embolization. Uterine arteries embolization. From the name uterine artery embolization, an interventional radiologist catheterizes femoral artery and under local anesthesia after catheterization. He injects an embolizing agent into uterine arteries and this embolizing agent will just close the uterine artery, will decrease the blood supply and will cause ischemia of the fibroid mass, okay? And by this, treat the fibroid. Sometimes we have to apply this multiple times, okay, to different treatment of fibroid. This treatment or surgery will preserve uterus, okay? You just embolize the trunk heart. It will shrink, but will still uh, uterus, okay? And it advised not to get pregnant women with the trunk heart embolization. And take care that it is not used in large fibroids or in fibroids that are par parasitic. Because parasitic fibroids, the blood supply is from the mesentery, from the momentum, from the abdominal structures okay it's not from the uterus man. so we'll not get benefit from using this in, in parasitic or large fibroid we just use it for small fibroid and advise not to get pregnant the second surgery to be done is mri guided ultrasound ablation new method of treatment okay we use mri to guide us to ablate the fibroid by ultrasound weight by ultrasound waves okay in this case no fertility okay and but but only preserve uterus so like in uterine art embolization no fertility but you can preserve uterus okay this is the newest method of treatment and sometimes you have to apply it more than one time to be effective the third and the most important surgery of fibroid is myomectomy Myomectomy. Myomectomy is done either by laparoscope or laparotomy or even hysteroscopy in some kind. Okay. Myomectomy will preserve fertility. Okay, but you have to uh, pay attention that the subsequent pregnancy should be uh, delivered by cesarean section because myomectomy is a risk factor for rupture uterus. Okay. So you have to do cesarean sections. Myomectomy is one of the most used treatments 
for uh, uh, uterine fibroid and preserve fertility. The last method of treatment is hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is the only definitive treatment. In myomectomy, about 60% of cases recur. Okay, but in hysterectomy, it is the definitive treatment. About 2,100 uh, hysterectomy is done due are done in America due to fibroid. Okay, so it is definite treatment of fibroid hysterectomy. Okay, the differential diagnosis of fibroid we may it may be ovarian mass or than fibroid. The tubular ovarian inflammatory conditions, okay, it may be a sarcoma, any mass in the uterus, uterine polyp, okay, any, any other thing. This is all about fibroid. Thank you very much for watching. We talked about the, uh, the definition of fibroid, the types, the locations of fibroid, the manifestation, the physical examination, the lines of treatment, management, different types of surgeries. And the function they use is on that. Thank you very much.